I think this is the most cooking I've ever seen you do. It's because he critiques when I make something, so he wants it to be done a certain way. It's not that I can't cook, it's just he wants to cook do all the The tasty cooking. way. What? Welcome to Without a Recipe, the cooking show where contestants have no experience, no instructions, and probably no hope. It's okay. a sad excuse for a dumpling. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Brownies, dumplings, pizza, and the grand finale, cheesecake. We're not just doing sweet, we're doing savory. And bitches, I can cook. Keith might not get mad. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I might not put alcohol in my shit. Oh man, this is like home. You excited? Well, buckle up, because there's disaster ahead and there's no turning back now. By now you may have heard that the Try Guys have made a movie and it is called Behind the Try, a Try Guys documentary. You can be the first person to see it by getting tickets now to the Try Guys live event world premiere. There's gonna be a red carpet, special guests, special surprises, live performances, you bet you. And for all the information you need and more, go to tryguys.com slash movie. I think it's about time we wrap this up, just like those dumplings. Woo! Enjoy the show! The Try Guys are back in the test kitchen for Without a Recipe. To kick off this season, they're making dumplings. I broke it! It's okay! Let's go for it! What's your strategy this time, Ned? F*** it up! <laughs> You know, 2020, the world's upside down. Everything's crazy, which means I'm gonna fucking win. I've fucked up a lot in this series. Do we have anything that can help me? I flew water over the country for you. I'm the defending season champion, which means I get to be the sassy villain. Look, I read the YouTube comments. I didn't really appreciate that my dishes got called not creative. So this season, I'm getting creative. So some might say, Eugene, maybe you should like not put alcohol and everything. Maybe you shouldn't make things totally crazy. Mm. Now, I'm just gonna go totally left field. So last season, I was pretty adversarial with the judges. You couldn't even have it. How could you even have a vote? I just put in too much xanthan gum. I took a risk, right? Daddy's favorite. I wanted to honor my father. That didn't work out. So no more honoring my father. Till cheesecake. Each of the Try Guys will have two hours to make a dumpling of their choice. Then, the next day, they will cook and present them to our panel of judges. God, why didn't I do this in a bowl? <laughs> no, dude, this is the this way is the, This is the way you do it. You, know, you gotta be able to feel it. I'm Rosanna Pansino. I'm a YouTuber. Also, I'm a baker. I know food. I am, I'm a fellow foodie here. So I was a judge on last season, and um, there was a lot going on first season, so I can't wait for the second. <laughs> Hi, my name's Matt McLean. I'm Eugene's boyfriend, and I think an excellent home cook. I think I'm better than all of these guys, so that's why I'm here to judge. Uh, I can't wait to rip these dumplings apart. <laughs> Matt, every wow. time you watch without a recipe, you're upset. Yes, you guys are horrible. <laughs> Matt's my boyfriend. There's a reason I don't put him in videos. He watches these videos and only says terrible things. He's kind of like the Gordon Ramsay of the uh, Try Guys group. But he might want to make Eugene lose, which is exciting. My name is uh, Perry Chung. I'm the chef owner of Dumpling Monster in West Hollywood. I'm very curious to see what kind of dumplings these guys come up with today. Dumpling Monster has been open since February of 2019. Growing up in an Asian family household, uh, making dumplings is just, it's just kind of a thing that we always did. Like mom would just make dumplings during the holidays or uh, usually a lot of gatherings. But professionally making dumplings, I've been making dumplings for the past eight to nine years. The fun part about dumplings is there's really no origination from where it comes. There's different types of dumplings. There's uh, Korean dumplings, there's Japanese gyozas, Chinese dumplings, Taiwanese dumplings, you know, even Italians, they have a sort of a dumpling, which is like the ravioli. To start, we're gonna be making our dough, and then after that, we'll move on to the filling and the dipping sauces. All right, bakers, three, three two, two, one. Let's make some dumps. I'm gonna do high gluten. I'm pretty sure it needs to be like tensile. All-purpose flour, high gluten flour, but let's try one of each. Here's what I know about making dumpling dough, is you cover a table in a pile of flour and you crack eggs into it and then you stir right. it with your finger. Right, right, from the top down yeah. videos. Yeah, I see it on the internet all the time. I've made dumplings so many times as a kid, but what? I'm not making Asian style dumplings, so we'll see what happens. I will be making what I am calling 
a Texas barbecue dumpling. See, I am Asian, but I'm also very Texan. So I've decided to squish together my two worlds into the perfect little food. So I'm taking everything that you might find at a Texas barbecue joint and trying to shove it all into one little dumpling. Zach, you're making Asian dumplings, aren't you? I'm making an Asian inspired vegan dumpling. They're gonna have tofu, a little bit of walnuts. Now I'm making vegan dumplings, which puts me at a flavor disadvantage. So I'm gonna try and compensate. I'm gonna put kimchi in my dumplings. I'm gonna try and put some pineapple in my dumplings. I want just that little kick of sweetness. I'm making New Orleans style crawfish dumplings. It's gonna have Cajun seasoning and dewy sausage and a little bit of seafood gumbo inside. My aunt, I don't know if you knew this, but she has a Cajun restaurant in New York City. I've always enjoyed Cajun food and my aunt's restaurant has been really hard hit with COVID. Yeah, I'm just thinking of her when I make this recipe. Well, I am making a breakfast sandwich inspired dumpling, a little turkey, sausage, egg, and cheese in a dumpling. We love reinventing breakfast, but have people done breakfast dumplings? Because Rosanna does not eat pork, I'll be using a turkey breakfast sausage. It'll be wrapped up and then it's gonna be boiled or steamed. One or two, I'm gonna decide in the moment. Today we're gonna to be making um, pork and chive dumplings. We're gonna be using um, AP flour and cake flour because it's a little more common for everyone to try at home. So I'm gonna start on a low setting just to get uh, all the dough mixed up and then I'm gonna slowly add the water in. I know that you put egg and water in it. I've got my dough, my Old Bay infused flour and salt mixture. Now I'm gonna make a little circle. See, I, I'm wondering if I should like think of my dough like a pancake a little bit. I don't know if you've had the greatest fast food invention of all time, the McRiddle, but I have. And there is something to that breakfast sausage sandwich with sweetness. Hmm. So what's your strategy this season? I've gone on a real journey between last season and this, you know? I'm a flavor man now. You're I, a flavor I've made, man. I made a tea line. I've had a whole culinary adventure. I'm here to take my learnings and apply it to the world of without a recipe, you know? I don't want to make something boring. I'm not Ned. <laughs> I brought the whole plate out because I intend on putting approximately nine eggs. Hey, it's worked for Eugene. I don't know, I'm taking what I know from making pasta. You got it right, Ned, I need more eggs. This is not enough eggs, not enough liquid going on over here. Guys, it's 2020, anything is possible. This season is gonna be so different. We're all going different directions. Like, I might not put alcohol in anything. So you're telling me you're not gonna put alcohol in anything you're doing? Well, we'll see. But I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to surprise the audience, you know? God, why didn't I do this in a bowl? <laughs> no, dude, this is, the way this, is the, this is the way you do it. You know, you gotta be able to feel it. Look, dumplings have been made for thousands of years just <laughs> like this. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm maybe around the too many egg side. <laughs> yeah. So to the dough, I added some salt, some canola oil. Right now, all the flour has come together, but typically the question is how long do you work the dough? Um, I would say probably about seven to 10 minutes. I think in seasons past, I've damned myself by, by not knowing when to quit. So I'm going to say that I don't want to overwork this dough. I'm done. I'm gonna make another one. You're gonna make another one? Yeah, I'm gonna try one with the gluten. Zach, this is the AP. what did you just say about knowing when to quit? Well, I know when to quit on this one. That's the AP dough. It did so well in, in history and science, but now we're gonna try some high gluten because I feel like high gluten will be stickier and you need your dumpling wrapper to be sticky. You know, between the Old Bay and the egg, mine is kind of this like interesting orange texture. Yeah, yours is very pretty. I need more flour. I thought I needed more eggs. I, I put too I, many eggs I in. I also need more flour. Flour, I think. Look at this. Yeah, do you, here, I'm do you, coming over, baby. Don't you hand. worry. Get the extra hand. Uh, 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 uh. Wait, do you want to go more than that? A little bit more. Okay. All right, that's good. <laughs> I'm concerned at how stringy this is. Is there something else that I should be putting in here? You can feel mine if I can feel yours. Yeah, 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 of course. Oh yeah, yours is much softer than mine. Oh wow, yours is much harder than mine. Hmm. I did notice that our doughs are already very different. Mine is sticky and gooey, yours is hard and firm. We'll see what happens. We now move on to the fillings. Ned? The juicy, the delicious, the little burst of flavor inside the dumpling. So while the dough is resting, uh, we're gonna work on our filling right now. I got some green Chinese chives, which is uh, very, very fragrant. What I have here also is a green onion and ginger. And what I like to make is like a ginger scallion water mix, which is something that I'll work into the filling. So to this, I'm gonna add about a cup of water. 
Oh, what do we have in the fridge? Okay, we've got tofu. I think I bit off more than I can chew conceptually because I'm trying to shove an entire Texas barbecue that usually takes a day or two days into an hour and a half of cooking. If you're doing Texas barbecue, you gotta have brisket. So I'm gonna try to make brisket even though we don't have enough time to properly braise or smoke it. So it's gonna be brisket meat at least. And I'm also gonna put in some baked pinto beans, maybe refried. I'm gonna put in collard greens because you gotta have collard greens. See already, this sounds like crazy. And potato salad. You can't have barbecue without potato salad. So I'm also putting potatoes in there. Kay. I'm just gonna make my, my dry rub for my brisket. Oh! oh! I love soup dumplings. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't we all? So I kind of want to inject some like beef broth, like maybe there's like a little burst of like brown gravy in there. Ooh. So when it comes to soup dumplings, it's a little more difficult. I want to say it's about a two to three day process. There is gelatin involved, which means you have to cook a broth and then need the gelatin to set so that you can get these little jelly pieces in there. The margin for error is is uh, very, very, very slim. I don't know how you get soup in a soup dumpling. I imagine, you know, maybe I get like a little syringe and just sort of like squirt it in at the end. So I'm gonna be making a little sausage, egg, and cheese situation. I've got some turkey sausage. It's turkey, turkey breakfast sausage. sausage, but I don't know how seasoned it is, and I also can't eat it raw to find out because mm. it's turkey. Oh, right, and I have to make two different versions for Rosanna. Oh, right, yes, and I'm also oh, sure. working for, Rosanna better appreciate what we're doing here today. Yeah. Because we alter our recipes for Rosanna Pancino, because she doesn't eat pork, and that's fine. That's fine, but you know, I wanted to make pork. I like pork. I've also got some kimchi. So you're gonna put kimchi in your dumplings? Yeah, I'm gonna try kind of crazy flavor. Hey, Key, mind if I hang out here? <laughs> <laughs> Over here, we got about uh, two pounds of pork. Uh, I like like to get um, a fat content of about 30 percent. Uh, the leaner the meat, the harder for the flavor to carry over. Usually what makes dumplings so so amazing is um, fat that carries over the flavors. I have about a tablespoon of sugar, light soy sauce, I say about an ounce, sesame oil, vegetarian oyster sauce, a little cornstarch. The cornstarch will act to kind of help um, keep everything binded together. And over here I have some white pepper which will give it a nice little uh, spice. What I'm doing is I'm gonna dry all this tofu out and then I'm basically just gonna crumble it. Um, stressed. It's okay, Eugene. Believe in yourself. So normally I would boil the potatoes, I would saute the collard greens. It's gonna take too long. What if I put them, what if I one pot it? What if I, so what if I be put like, it all in one pot? What if I put it all in one pot? You could be the one pot man. Oh my God. I've worked for 10 minutes and I've gotten Five crawfish. I need to speed this up. All right, so I'm gonna put my dry rub on my brisket. I watch a lot of cooking shows, so I know how people do things. I just don't personally do them often, but. <laughs> well, cause, okay, so your partner, Matt, is a phenomenal cook. He cooks every day. So this is kind of like a nice opportunity for you to return the favor. I guess I was first joking that I wasn't gonna take this seriously, but I'm realizing I'm making dumplings that are both Asian and Texan inspired, which is my identity, for my boyfriend who cooks. So if I lose, then I'm shaming not only myself, but my ancestors and my partner and the gay community. Your past, present, and future. Yeah, basically, this is a gay rights challenge and I gotta step up. No, okay. what? Oh, but I've just spent my whole hour making crawfish. We can do this, we just gotta work a little faster. This is the last one. Uh, there's nothing like garlic and oil sauteing that makes you <laughs> Horny? I don't, what, I don't know what else to say, but it's so delicious. Would you believe that that whole bowl of crawfish just produced this much? Are you f***ing kidding me? Well, I, ate, I ate a lot of it. Oh yeah, I ate some of it too. Um, what are these? Japanese peanuts with chili. That could be fun. No, 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 no. Zach, control. I'm gonna try it. Control. No, 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 no. But let me just try the snack. Oh, that is so spicy. So Woo! don't, you're not putting that in your dumpling, right? I'm gonna try. Woo! You can try wow. to put it in? Yeah, because I want a spice of sorts. Why don't you just use one of the spices? Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> because this, is a, this already is spiced. Yeah, but then you're also putting nuts in your dumplings. I already have, I have walnuts in my dumplings. Yeah, you don't need more nuts in it. You're nuts. You're nuts. You're actually nuts if you're gonna put the nuts in. I'm thinking about it. Well, I know that Eugene has made them several times, so I think every part of the way he'll know what he's doing. He's got a crazy idea. I don't think it'll work. And I liked Zach's until he said pineapple. Now Eugene, kimchi and pineapple. Yeah. What do you think? I think that's a um, really interesting combo, but you know what? Kimchi is surprisingly good together with things. Confusing. Like good confusing? Yeah. Is it making you <laughs> horny? 
So I gave this a good little mix over here, and then from here, I'm gonna add some cabbage. Usually for a water dumpling, it's kind of nice to have a cabbage. It's naturally sweet. I need a little bit of cabbage. Just a little bit of cabbage. I feel like all good dumplings have a little bit of cabbage. Breakfast sandwiches don't tend to have cabbage, but dumplings do. So it's a little about taking some things from the world and also honoring the world itself. Do we have red wine here? It is so funny that I just realized that I could put red wine in the sprays, and that would actually be correct. The one time I never decided to put alcohol in something, Glug, 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 Oh man, it's just like home. Back to it, back to the basics. I love a good cheddar on top of the breakfast sandwich. Smell this. Does this smell like a football party or what? Oh, it smells like a football party. It smells like a football party over here. This is still wet. Shit. Dude, all my stuff is so wet. I'm basically doing the rub into the um, soupy concoction just to make sure that there's a lot of infusion of spice. So I'm gonna let this pot sit and it's just gonna stew. So for dumplings, we kind of want everything to kind of hold together. So if you're working with a meat filling, if you cook it, it won't hold together. It'll kind of fall apart and, and not really bind together. Ned, cast me up on what you're doing over here. Well, Keith, I got some okra, I got some onions, some mushrooms, some chives, mm. and this is my aunt. And dewy sausage. Oh, let me take a piece of that. Mm. Oh, yum. Right. And I'm gonna saute it all in a pan and try and kind of make some gravy in it. Whoa, I, I just don't put really... raw meat in a bowl. That seems a lot easier. But I'm taking a risk, right? Because it might not be cooked all the way and then I'll kill somebody. These are canned beans. I thought they would be raw, which is good because I don't have time to cook beans, but I think I'm just gonna do refried beans. Tofu, green onion, pineapple, kimchi, Walnut, pepper, Japanese pepper, and miso. Let's mix that up. Okay, I'm gonna bring this down to more of a simmer. I think I actually have time to cook this. So I've got my crawfish with my Cajun seasoning. I've got my onion, okra, mushroom, delicious veggie blend. This meat is done. I'm ready to set it aside. I'm gonna add the eggs tomorrow. Gonna like scramble them in. But right now I'm gonna work on what this flavor needs to dip into. I'm gonna add that ginger scallion water that I worked on. And the more water you get away with in here, the juicier your dumpling and, and the looser your dumpling will be. Uh, be careful not to add too much water. Otherwise you have to find more meat to, to bind it back together. This mm. is so wet. It's like sopping wet. So I'm gonna try and dry it. <laughs> But here's my fear is that if I dry the kimchi too much, am I taking away the flavor? So my first thought is simply to add some hot sauce to maple syrup and call it a day, but that's not enough. So I'm gonna get a little bit of ginger, a little maple syrup. So when it comes to dumplings, dumplings do need a sauce. Uh, right now we're gonna be working on a chili soy sauce. But here I have one cup of light soy sauce, half a cup of water. Here I have some sambal chili sauce to give it a little heat, fresh ginger to give it that ginger taste because uh, every dumpling sauce has a really nice um, level ginger ginger taste to it. Sesame oil, chili oil I have just to add a little more spice. And then here we go is the vegetarian stir fry sauce, which um, it's about an ounce and a half to two ounces. And then I also add some um, sesame seeds. Uh, I'm gonna add a little burger sauce. It's, I just know that it's really good on breakfast sandwiches. So this is where my vinegar element is coming in. Half hour, oh, I don't need that. Shoot, I need, mm, I'm getting. All right, well, the beans are pretty much ready to go. I'm gonna start on my sauce. Oh, and shit, in the 20 minutes, we have to make our sauce too? Oh, shit! Are you, are you gonna have time for barbecue sauce? That's what you're doing right now? I'm doing it right now. Some pretty important ingredients. All I know is you for sure need Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire. Yeah, you got a lot of flavors. Are you worried that it's gonna be too flavorful? Absolutely. <laughs> But also, all of them taste great. That's true. I mean, I like flavors. All right, because time is running out, I'm gonna make my sauce. Four, five, six. One, two, three. Done. <laughs> Whisk. Just I f***ing every camera. I wanna f I f cameras with you. Here, you wanna do it together? Okay, and a cam. And my cam. And your cam. And this close up one. You're doing a lot less and it's working a lot less. <laughs> That's usually how one has confidence. Ability? <laughs> I think I'm all done. I think I'm in a happy place. A good chef knows when to stop. Well, I gotta dump in my wow, dump in the crawfish meat because I only have 14 minutes here. Oh wow. Wow, oh, that smells good, man. Golly! Mm. That smells mm. good. Mm. I fucking nailed this barbecue sauce, y'all. Oh my God, F measurements. I was just like, boom, bam, bazow. I'm afraid, I don't know that the ratio is right. So this is tofu, pineapple. Kimchi, kimchi. green onion, miso, 
spicy peanuts, walnuts, ginger, garlic. I want to experiment with this beef broth. Oh my God. You're going to put it into the veggie stock? Just going to try. I'm just going to experiment. We have 10 minutes left. We are down to the wire. With all of my braised ingredients, I'm going to stick it in this blender and try to get it to like a nice even mince. I want more kimchi. Yeah, I feel like my ratio is off. I've got too much tofu. Too much tofu? Yeah, it's like, it's overpowering it. I need that, that, that interesting crunch. Last season you were a star. What's your strategy this time, Ned? F it up. <laughs> You've got some great, strong flavors going on over here. It smells amazing. It looks good. And I'm fishing for a McDonald's sponsorship. Da 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 da. Hey. Ow. <laughs> oh my God. Down to the wire, bud. I'm freaking out, man. What are you doing over there? I'm trying to figure out how this comes on. Oh. More beef stuff. More beef stock, really? I don't know what to do. I guess I can start cleaning, you know, help the transition. You got it, man. I broke it. It's okay. Let's go for it. Did it's I break okay, it? Eugene. Eugene, we're number one and number two. We're doing so good. All right, I guess I'm hand chopping this. Wow, it smells like New Orleans down here. Woo! Except with all the, you know, vomit in the street. No. Oh. Well, I don't know if you've been to New Orleans. That place is crazy. They party. More ginger. You know, maybe it's a sign. Maybe it's good. This can be even chunkier, so it gives it like, you know, you can really tell there's meats. We're just chopping. We're just chopping. I mean, I think you achieved what you were looking for. It's got a gravy looking. Yes, yeah, it looks like some, a gumbo. Some gravy texture. Mmm. If I were really going for like a soup, I would have just kept adding broth, but yeah. uh, I still got to fit in the piece of dumpling. Yeah, I know. All right, I think, God, I am sweating. Hands up, bakers, hands up. Winners. It's the next morning. The Try Guys have one hour to fill their dumplings and cook them in front of the judges. Good morning! Oh. All right, guys, you ready to make some dumplings? I guess so. Let's dump it up. Our doughs look Your doughs look alike. very <laughs> different. Did y'all put egg in yours? Yeah, yeah. of course we did. did you, you didn't? Mm -mm. We put a lot of egg. We're making spaghetti, right? <laughs> so now that our dough's been resting, uh, we're gonna take a look at it. It should give it like a nice little springy, but we were gonna take this out, just work it a little bit. One very important thing about uh, dough is you just need to keep it covered so that way it doesn't dry out. I feel like my dough is way too wet. <laughs> yeah, my dough is pretty squishy. So I've actually got two doughs I'm working with. This one is a, a high gluten and this one is a all purpose. Oh, you're making a bagel? No, I'm just doing what my mom used to do. She makes a bagel? I'm just doing what Eugene's mom used to yeah, do. I'm gonna watch Eugene's mom. Is everyone just gonna copy me? Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. So right now I'm looking for a dough that kind of keeps its shape. We're gonna roll this out and start forming the little balls. So here I formed a log of dough. I'm probably gonna try to go for about 10 grams of dough. Just make my way down. Why does this remind me of something? Ew. Ew, Zach. Oh, Zach. Yeah, it's a gross snake. Well, I think I made pretty good pasta. And what is a dumpling other than a ravioli? I think you're absolutely right. So I'm finishing making my filling right now. I'm adding some egg. Also, you know, there's already egg in the dough. So it's really going to be that breakfast sandwich vibe. It's crazy, like, how fast I've seen people do it and how much effort it's taking me to do just one of these. Yeah. You know, my mom and my aunt and my grandma would make dumplings a lot, and I'd sit and help. And this is uh, probably the most nostalgic for me. This part is rolling out the dough and then filling it. What was the food for y'all growing up that you did with your family? Uh, grilled chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and then from here, we're just gonna do a light dusting on top just so it doesn't stick your hand. Press it down and what you're looking for is like these little uh, mini disc. So we're gonna get all these ready. Here we have a little hand rolling pin and what we're gonna do is we're gonna just roll it down part way and then just start forming the edges. The edges I like to keep thin um, but the, the center we're gonna keep it a little stronger because that's where we need to place the filling to kind of stretch it out. Now one thing I don't really know at this moment is how big to make my dumplings. I think I'm making mine slightly larger because of how much filling I have. That's true. I'm making mine, they're gonna be called Xiao Long Bao Chicka Bao Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I really focused on the integrity of the wrapper, so I wanna make sure that this is like as perfect as I can get it before I fill it. My fear is that they're gonna break in the cook. So as a beginner, typically you would probably go to the store and get the wrapper, but as this becomes a hobby, you know, it took me three months to pick up this technique. Um, sometimes it takes longer, and to be honest, even my technique is not perfect, uh, but uh, you just gotta keep trying. Oh wow, mine really congealed overnight. This has been sitting overnight. Let's see if it tastes good. It's confusing. 
I can't say that I love it. I'm not allowed to add anything to this right now, right? I would add more pineapple to this. Here we have a filling stick, which is what we use at Dumpling Monsters because uh, the wood, the bamboo wood, doesn't really stick to the meat. You don't want too much filling because otherwise your dumpling is not gonna cook in time before the dough finished co cooking. I should be measuring this by weight with the scale, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. <laughs> Tuck in a little pineapple baby. It almost looks like someone vomited an al pastor taco. Yeah, I'm trying to wrap one. A little dumpling dough. Oh. It looks like a little empanada. Yeah, that looks cute. Little, little dumpling dough. And here we're wrapping the dumplings that we're doing to boil. You really need a perfect seal for boiled dumplings because uh, it's gonna be surrounded by water. The technique for this is crimping your hands in the center, giving a nice big squeeze, and you have yourself a little dumpling here. I think my dumpies are too thick. Yeah, I know. It's really tough to get this dough right. Uh, definitely my end pieces are like super doughy. This is some beef broth. That's I'm gonna see broth. if I can inject it in and make soup dumplings. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Me trying to get the soup situation going. Wow, is that uh -oh. how they do that? I don't know. It isn't, but I'm loving it. That's the cool. The creativity here is out of control, Ned. Thank you. I feel good about honoring the shape. This is how my mom and grandma used to make it. The, this is like just the basic crimping method. I'm nervous that the deep frying is gonna open them up, but we'll see. Oh, you can see it fill up. Oh, yeah. When I, I left all my tortillas stacked, over time, as they became more room temperature, they became one. So, I'm taking that opportunity to make some hilariously large dumplings. I've had a revelation. I think that the acid of the pineapple cooked this overnight in a way that has made it foul. Oh, no. Oh, that's not good. I am no longer confident. All right, 10 minutes, bakers. 10 minutes. Uh, I think I'm ready to cook. I'm feeling pretty confident. The only thing that does worry me is that I have to cook this turkey all the way through. And the judges are gonna watch us for the first time cook these. Yeah. When it comes to steaming a dumpling, you're kind of waiting for the dumpling to kind of puff up. You have to have a good seal because if you don't have a good seal on your dumpling, during the puff up process, uh, the dumpling can puff and open. If the dumpling is too big, then the inside might not cook all the way. Okay, so with my dumpinadas finished, we've got Ned making some shoe mine, some little flurry over there, they look nice. We've got a little fortune cookie action coming out of Zach. And Eugene, who has stressed on his, his dough quality, is making the perfect looking dumplings. And so much leftover barbecue <laughs> for me to eat. What an incredible day it is here in the Without a Recipe kitchen. One minute. One minute. Okay, this is it. Last chance. I think I'm gonna make one or two more and I'm I'm happy with this. Very unsure if my seal is actually sealed correctly. I'm actually now nervous about any steaming because there's already so much moisture in here. So I may just stop at pan frying. Ten, nine, nine eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up, bakers! Dumplings! <laughs> oh! Today we're gonna be judging on four things. Taste, presentation, creativity, and is it a dumpling? So today, as a first, we're actually gonna get to watch the guys cook so we can critique them in the process. So let's get cooking. <laughs> All right, so we've got our judges watching over there. We've got the other two Try Guys watching us over here. And but we've got God watching us above. All love right. you, God. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, it's the main show. We've got our dumplings. We've 20 got 20 minutes, minutes on, on the, the clock. clock. Oh, not much. Here we go. We don't have a margin for error here. I like want mine to really feel pasta. like, Back. you know, a country crawfish boil. So yeah, I'm serving mine with a little bit of corn. My gut tells me like cook this for like six minutes and then add some water, but they're frozen. So I might do it like closer to 10. We're gonna start on our pan fried dumplings right now. Uh, we're gonna put a little oil down there um, on a heated pan. And then from here, once the oil is in, we're gonna drop our dumplings in here. Uh, I'm gonna be steaming mine. I think the appropriate amount is eight minutes. I think it goes pretty quickly. Oh my God, there's so much steam. <laughs> Get that corn in there. The camera's gotta be steamed up by now. Crossbar. I've had cooking from everyone else except for Zach. So I'm really wow. interested Ooh. to see how his turn out. Pop that cherry. Zach, the wild card. Oh no. Having some difficulty getting my dumplings. Yeah, what's going on? I'm having some difficulty getting my dumplings off the parchment. 
Some of them have really souped up here. Steam dumpling is pretty much easier than the boiled dumpling. Um, you just need to make sure that you have parchment paper or some sort of cabbage so that way the dumpling will not stick to the steamer basket. Oh god, they're all sticking. Take off this one. Oh, Ned. Ned or no. Was that good? I saw soggy bottom leak some soup. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say that putting the soup in, it's got a real chance of messing me up. All right, I've got my dumplings arranged here. Six pork and four without pork. We're gonna bring our heat down to a medium, and now we're gonna add some water. What you're looking for is the water to kind of just all come out completely, and what's left is the oil. From there, it should crisp up. Here's where Zach learns what happens when you mix water and hot oil <laughs> and cover it. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm baby. Steamed. Woo! Let's have an explosion. It's an innovative frying and steam. I don't have much time. We got what? Ten minutes? These are my first ones. These are the test. I'm gonna learn from these and I'm gonna do it again. Ned, how do they look? They look good, and they are coming off the paper way easier now that they're cooked. And for the pan-fried dumplings, I like to have the sauce on the side because um, if you put the soy sauce on, you lose all that crispiness from the moisture from the dumpling sauce. And this is our pan fried dumpling. Wow, these are perfect colors. Look at that. That's perfect. 10 seconds. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Done. Yay. Wow, a valiant effort from our boys. Judges, I am pleased to present my New Orleans style Cajun crawfish dumplings. I call them my country dumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a good name. The inside is a, it should taste like a crawfish gumbo. Uh, Rosanna, yours does not have andouille pork sausage, but you guys have you. pork sausage in there as well. There's some okra, onions, mushrooms, and uh, I mix a little Old Bay seasoning into the dumpling dough. It's served with a corn on the cob and garlic butter, just like a country crawfish boil. <laughs> this is really creative, right? Out, right? I've never seen this. It's definitely creative. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, and I should mention, they're soup dumplings. It's definitely interesting. <laughs> I think this is cheese. Is there cheese in here? No, no cheese. Oh, okay, there's something there's a, stretchy in here. That's probably the okra, yeah. The texture's a little odd. I wish the spice was in the dumpling and not in the wrapper, because it makes it kind of an unattractive color. Unattractive. It's what's on the inside that counts. I get it, It's it's a. it actually tastes very um, southern. The skin texture, though, is just a little on the heavy side. Why is it so tough? I'm Italian, so I know how to make pasta, so right it's on. a. Uh, it's an egg-based uh, dumpling dough. I think it was, you know, good effort, just bad execution. Wow. Thank you for Rough. being direct. <laughs> but, you know, on Ned's behalf, we do um, read him a lot for not going outside the box and being creative. Are these creative? Very. And Ned? Yeah. Mm. I think the filling's delicious. Mm -hmm. A boiled Cajun Pop-Tart. Mm. You know? I actually love this. Yeah, it's good. I think this is delicious. I love those flavors. Really, I just loved the filling and the spices. It's just the wrapper. It's just tough. And I think it might be a case of too much flour, especially if it's an egg-based wrapping. So what do you think? Is it a dumpling? Yeah, it's a dumpling. It's okay. a sad excuse for a dumpling. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, that's, were you guys, I'm the first person to go. Were you guys told to be super critical or something? Judges, I am very excited for you to try a fusion between Japan and Hawaii. I call these my Mapo Tofu, wait, my Mapo Luau dumplings. They are vegan tofu dumplings, and I put some kimchi, some pineapple, uh, and a little bit of Szechuan peppercorn to give it a little bit of a nice kick, and it is served with a soy vinegar and pineapple dipping sauce. You know, uh, Mapo's from China, right? China, what did I say? Japan? Yeah. You know, yeah. you know kimchi's from Korea too. And pop, pot sticker. Uh, let me take that again. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you have China. Anyway, enjoy guys. I do like pineapple, so I am hopeful. I love pineapple and I love bread. I love how brave those bites are. Those are very chewy. Bites. Very chewy, okay, nice, sick. That's what I was that's going all for. All I taste is pineapple. Good. And like spice. Yeah, that's great. Rosanna, what's going on? Other yeah, judges are awfully quiet. <laughs> okay, all right, she loves it. I got it's hit like, with pineapple. It's like chewing gum. Yeah. And then a 
bunch of spikes. Nice. Is there even anything else in here? Oh, he's ripping it apart. He loves it. He just wants to get to the middle of it. <laughs> What's kind of saving it is it's fried. Yeah. Because, you know, stuff fried tastes good. Yeah. So I think aesthetically, this is like a beautiful dumpling. The sauce is a uh, beautiful. It's quite tasty. Yes. Um, I can't say the same about the filling. No, no, it's cool, man. Stop there. You're great. It's awesome. <laughs> and I don't think the dough so, is cooked all the way. It's a little gummy. It's not. Well, I'm gonna put a pause in that and ignore it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would say it's creative. It's edible. Fried. Edible. You I can eat it. it. It's cooked. Rosanna, uh, this is the first food of mine that you have swallowed, I believe. Correct. I am a sucker for fried bread. You put me at a carnival, I will gain 10 pounds. Yeah, I want you to keep that sense memory and just, just is, associate. Is it a dumpling? Yes. Is it? Sorry. A good dumpling? I don't think so. As we all kind of agreed, it's like a little all over the place. Yeah, you're really saved by the fact that it's fried. It's all over the place though on your side. I think mm, the second bite was not good for me. <laughs> oh, it's bizarre. It kind of hurts to eat yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Judges, most importantly, is it edible? That's not, most That's not really the criteria. <laughs> to, me, to me it is, guys. <laughs> I have to swallow to taste it, but uh, I yes. would not want to go back for a second bite. I'm fine with that, guys. I'm taking this as a win. Mm -hmm. Judges, yeah, Zach. Yeah. Thank you so much. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right, All right Eugene, let's hit the kitchen. All right. All right, we have seen Zach and Ned, they crushed it. Now it's time for us to get crushed too. Uh, we've got uh, lots of things here. Eugene, how are you cooking today? You know, we're gonna stick with our original plans. The judging doesn't phase us. We got this. We got this. I'm gonna try deep frying dumplings for the first time. So I'm gonna do two different methods. I'm gonna steam a batch and I'm going to boil a batch. I'm cooking everything from raw. Everyone else had innards that were already cooked. Mine are not, so I really wanna make sure everything's cooked. And I just don't know if boiling or steaming is better. So let's go for it. So here we're gonna start with the boiling dumplings. Usually that takes a little more time than the pan fried dumplings. We have a pot of hot water. I'm gonna put a little oil just so that it doesn't stick. We're gonna season this with a little salt. After the dumplings are in, we're gonna wait for it to come back to a boil and bring it back down to medium heat. That way the filling in the center cooks all the way and, um, and won't overcook the dough too much. Pretty, those right? Are, those look huge. I said it was pretty, not if it was Almost huge. Almost like an empanada. I mean, not as a type of dumpling. So another method to cook dumplings is you can also deep fry it. I do want to caution, if you put too much filling, by the time your wrapper gets that golden brown color that you love, then the inside might not cook all the way. Golden brown is usually my go-to phrase for anything that is cooked well. So I have put my steam boys in. I'm gonna start them at eight minutes. So these dumplings have been cooking about for about eight to 10 minutes. They're all floating to the top. Uh, with the boiled dumplings, you don't want to overboil it. Once you overboil it, the kind of dumpling skin turns into a mush. So so we're gonna take this out right now, put our sauce on that we came from a mason jar. So for the boiled dumpling, what I'm looking for is a wrapper that has a nice bouncy texture and great structure so that it's not um, going to fall apart. I think I went really outside the box, you know? I never have deep fried something before. Hopefully that works in the favor. But you know what? If I can get one compliment from Matt, then that's a win in my book. Aww. If I can win this episode with Matt judging, there's no greater prize. Aww. Aww. I also want to win win with that judge. <laughs> yeah, I think we all agree. We that want that to prove. That would be so <laughs> nice. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands off, dumpers. Fun, please. <laughs> Judges, we all love a good breakfast sandwich, don't we? Yum, yum, wake up, eggy, sausage, cheesy goodness. Well, I am proud to present my farmhouse breakfast dumplings. There's some fennel, there's some scallions, there's definitely cheese, egg, and turkey sausage. And then it is paired with a little sort of sweet and spicy dipping sauce. Keep the smell of this sauce is actually really good. The skin texture, it's a little thick on the edges, but um, I'm probably just gonna avoid all that and just go for the inside over here. A great tactic. <laughs> They didn't fall apart, but it but it is pretty thick. The sausage is quite spicy. Is it? Mixed with the spicy sauce is like kind of a little overwhelming. I like the flavorings inside. I like this part. Uh -huh. I mean, this part's rubber. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like really thick here. Mm -hmm. Well, creativity wise, I mean, it's, it is it, it is like a breakfast and a dumpling. Mm -hmm. I love the turkey. I use turkey for everything. Ground turkey for almost everything. What's happening over there? What's but, happening? <gasps> I think I got a bone. <laughs> well, that's not my fault. I <laughs> bought turkey from the store. I'm okay though. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I can see past that. I'll let Ralph's know. 
as we can see is the turkey over here, ground turkey over here is cooked. Over here, this is the meat is raw right here a bit. You know what is this is interesting because this one's cooked. Huh. This one's cooked and this one's just a little it's undercooked. This one that got out. With the size, it's harder to cook and steam with yeah. it being so large to make sure it's cooked all the way through. So do you think it's a dumpling? I do think it's a dumpling. Just need a little bit longer to cook. Yeah, but one of them didn't make the cut. The filling was nice. Um, I did get a bone, but I can see past that. Um, I thought it was odd to make a breakfast sausage dumpling, but this it actually kind of, with the seasoning you put in there and, and this, the sauce that you made here, it kind of tied it together. Yeah, overall creativity is pretty good on this one. It kind of tastes like a really good like McDonald's breakfast sandwich. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. but that's been like left in this like steaming a little too long, so it's a little wet. Part of my inspiration was the McGriddle. Yeah, it tastes a little bit like mm -hmm. McGriddle. Mm -hmm. And I love this sauce. The Thank sauce you. was good. Thank oh my God, I just made a connection. It's like you make sauce or something. I do, and guess what? There's a little bit of my sauce in there. There's a little are burger you sauce kidding? in there. Make your own delicious burger sauce. Get yourself a bottle today. Shut up, Keith, are you serious? I am, this is, a little, I, you this know, is delicious. Yeah, thanks. Bummer, it's not a sauce competition. Yeah, bummer, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. we should really focus in Shut on the- Shut the <laughs> I didn't talk shit about your food. Just let me, let him enjoy. <laughs> Jesus, Zach. Fucking tofu, mother. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, judges. As an Asian, I am a dumpling lover, but I am also an Asian from Texas. Ooh. So I wanted to flip the script and create something new. This is my Texas barbecue dumplings. Inside you will find braised brisket, collard greens, potatoes, and refried beans. And on the side is a homemade barbecue sauce. <gasps> Dude, this is the most cooking I've ever seen you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how long were you saving that joke? <laughs> I'm the only one who cooks at home. Eugene doesn't cook. It's because he critiques when I make something, so he wants it to be done a certain way. It's not that I can't cook, it's just he wants to cook. Do all the, the tasty cooking. way. What? I want to say the crimping is beautiful. Um, it smells nice. It's kind of like an empanada shape. You know, it's pretty big. It's, everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> Everything. Hold on. <laughs> it's quite, quite the chew. It's a little tough. Like a Texas, te like, a, yeah. like a Texan, tough like a it, Texan. It's, te it's like Texas a, tough. Built Texas tough. <laughs> yeah, kind of gets stuck in your teeth a little bit. Yeah, that's that's a very Texan thing. You just I gotta, gotta see what's in here because meat. so far. It looks like just meat. Mm, just like Texas. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really taste all the different elements, but everything is kind of mixed together, you know? It gets very meat forward. You love everything I give you that's mm -hmm. meat forward. Hey, no. Whoa. <laughs> Did no one catch that? I, I thought that was I, 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 I got it. He doesn't even laugh. He doesn't even crack a smile. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was pretty good. Texas hot lake. <laughs> I'm gonna say for the record that this is the one dumpling that I keep eating. Yeah. Everything definitely does come together. Mm -hmm. Like one-stop shop barbecue. Eugene did better than I thought he would do, but I don't think I would order this. <laughs> and I mean, to me, this is really an empanada, right? It's an empanada. So if we're saying an empanada is a type of dumpling, which it is, then it's which a dumpling. It is. Which if it's clearly not a dumpling, is. then I wouldn't call it a dumpling because this is pretty classic empanada. Wrapped like a dumpling, it crimps like a dumpling. Yeah, barbecue empanadas, delicious. I mean, they are, they're delicious. They are technically dumplings too, but Hmm. You wouldn't call it that on the sign. No. Keith, are you trying to convince us that this is not a dumpling so he should be disqualified? If, if that's what you think I'm trying to say, that must already be in your mind. I mean, I'm just trying to interpret it. So really the big question at the end is, Matt, uh, am I going to be cooking this at home now? I don't think so. This doesn't seem very healthy. <laughs> Great, all right, we'll leave you to deliberate. On that note, boys, <laughs> let's go dump. We'll go dump and let you all dump your minds. Mm. Thank you, judges. Thank you, judges. Thank you. Judges. Thank you. Judges, time to deliberate. Let's start with Ned's. I thought the taste was okay. It wasn't my favorite. Yeah, I thought it was okay. I thought the creativity was really cool. I think he, him trying to fuse a dumpling and that style of cooking and food was really neat. It did take me to a crawfish boil, it had the butter, but then the 
the skin itself. It was just the texture of the dough, which I think everyone struggled with a little bit, mm -hmm. but it was the texture of the dough that really kind of, woo, threw me really off hard, there. Yeah. yeah. Zach was very interesting. Yeah, I think the filling really was a miss for me in that one. The flavors didn't really meld together. It was just really mushy. Okay, I'm a little biased because I like bread, but when you <laughs> pan fry, you know, a dumpling, it's mm -hmm. just so good. But that filling yeah. was a bit odd for me. I mean, when you look at it, you do want to eat it, right? It has mm -hmm. that texture and that look. It was a sweet, sour, mushy, then salty. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Keese was the one where you got a bone. Yeah, mm -hmm. I gotta start with the good. It, it reminded me of breakfast. Um, the sauce was amazing. But I did get a bone in my dumpling, which I can't fault him for because he didn't grind it. But you also had raw meat in it. True, so I think most of them were cooked. Yeah. I think we, there's just a few with a little surprises. I think they could have- So does that been... knock him down then? Because he didn't fully execute on the technique? Yes. He did take a risk of using a raw filling. So I think Eugene did a great job. I've seen what he can do at home. I've seen how horrible he is. So I think he definitely has been learning. I think the, pl the flavor profile was really good. I think frying them was really smart. Is he creative? I mean, I think he's not combining flavors that we haven't had before. I'm proud of him. Aww. <laughs> I'm proud of him too. <laughs> he seemed the most married, like cohesive, like like they went together. Right. Uh, fortunate for us, he, he did cook the filling. He chose the perfect uh, cooking technique, which was um, just frying everything. Okay, if we had to judge on just the skin, I think they would all get fourth place. Definitely. Yeah, so we gotta take that off. We can't even have that be a factor. It sounds like we have some more things to discuss. This is gonna be a really tough choice. Have you guys been working out? Because you look incredible. Zach, yeah. are you trying to get brownie points? Oh, that's next episode, yeah. Rosanna. Yeah. We'll see you next week. I gotta say, I don't want to discourage, but today today was was a very interesting day for me to judge dumplings. I think collectively, if you guys worked the dough a little longer, things probably could have been a little different in terms of uh, the dumpling skin. I, I, I'm kind of flabbergasted. I had I thought that was gonna be the easiest part of today. Right? I know, it seems like that was like, well, I got this, I don't know. It seems all over the place. I'm dying, can you tell us who won? <laughs> <laughs> so I have the privilege of announcing fourth place. Oh. How's that a privilege, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> And that is going to someone who really missed the mark on filling and on the baking and on the actual bread. And that would be Zach. Ah, so congratulations. Congratulations, oh you have fourth place. It really tasted like spicy pineapple. It wasn't cooked all the way through. They were kind of weird sizes. Um, it just really missed the mark for all of us. What are you talking about? Rosanna, we had the carnival connection. You fucking, I brought you to the, you can, yeah, you were throwing darts. You won a teddy bear. You did the little ring toss on the milk jars. We were on a Ferris wheel together and we you loved it. And Matt, I get it. Yeah, I mean, guys, I get it. It was, it was uh, <laughs> not good. I'm learning a lot. I at least know where I went wrong this time. I'm gonna get first place by the end of this. Mark my words, judges. Respectfully disagree, but thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like the dough was really bad across all four, which kind of opens things up because if it's yeah. a little more focused on fillings, I have no idea where this yeah, is. Yeah, I don't know either. Up. Now in third place, we have... Back to third. No! Great creativity. We like the theme. It is a dumpling. We really didn't enjoy the flavors in the dough. What do you mean? What? I'm pissed really off for you, bro. I'm pissed for you. We flavors to be in the filling and in the sauce. The dough was chewy and not good, but then I realized everyone's dough was <laughs> chewy and not good, so you're telling me that my filling was bad? Okra is a very odd filling choice because it's kind of gummy, so I was, wasn't sure if it was cheese or something pulling out. Your filling was not bad. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you for saying that it was creative. 
I do, uh, I do appreciate that. So now we're down to Keith and Eugene. They're both uh, very creative. Keith, this one was a little tricky for me because what I really loved, the seasonings. I think it, you did the seasonings maybe the best. However, because you made them different sizes, some small, some big, I unfortunately got one that wasn't cooked. Eugene was the only one who kind of took that technical capability up a little bit and fried his dough, but inside it was all just kind of like a little mushy. But we really enjoyed it holistically, how all of the flavors and textures came together. So... Wait, without so further ado, you got to second. I know, I was so close. <laughs> the winner of the dumpling challenge today is gonna be Eugene. Oh! You did a great job. I'm cooking this for you every night. Wow, that feels great. I feel like uh, I typically would have done an Asian dumpling immediately, but I wanted to try to think outside the box, do something a little different. I'm just happy, you know, uh, I, I'm not trying to build an enterprise on dumplings, but I am trying to build an enterprise on sauces, and uh, they all said my sauce is the best, so that's something you can count on. Well, congratulations, Eugene. Thank you, judges. This is just episode one of Without a Recipe, but we got three more coming. Come back next week, we're doing brown. We're doing pizza and we're ending with cheesecake. And I'm gonna win one of them. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Next week on Without a Recipe. Oh shit! Oh, it's jiggly. Ah. This is what I get for never measuring. Just dry. Dry. Oh. Oh. From the top, make it drop. That's some yummy brownies. Yummy brownies.